This video is a more in-depth step-by-step walkthrough of a project I put together to showcase IDEO notebook capabilities. You can find the link to a shorter demo with more details on where to find and install the IDEO Notebooks extension in the description. For this project, I wanted to use Sentinel-2 imagery to map the areas burned by a wildfire in the Canary Island of Tenerife in August of 2023. I decided to try out the machine learning random forest classifier for mapping this extent, and thought IDEO Notebooks would be a great tool to prototype my projects. Let's dive right in. Here is my IDEAL notebook open in Visual Studio Code. Note that in order to be able to produce a project like the one I'm about to show, you will need an IDEAL license to run IDEAL notebooks and an appropriate NV license to call any NV tasks. In this particular example, I use some tasks from the deep learning module, so that is an additional requisite. And of course, you need whatever data set you want to work on. You can see that you can set different levels of headings and subheadings using the markdown cells. You can also include bulleted lists to provide context about your code. You can use the icons at the top of your notebook to add new markdown cells or code blocks wherever you wish. For instance, I can add a new markdown cell here. I can also go into any existing cell and make modifications. You can also embed graphics, like this PNG image of the case study area showing the regions affected by the wildfire. The main strength of notebooks is that you can intersperse ideal code blocks between your markdown cells. Here, I am showing how to set the path to the directories where I have the data for this example, and I've added some extra lines of code that check those directories actually exist, and otherwise print out an error message or create the missing directory. As you can see, notebooks have syntax highlighting, which helps make the code more readable. This code could easily be adjusted by another user to follow the same processing workflow with a different dataset or example location. You can walk through the notebook and run each cell one by one by clicking the play button next to each cell, or you can choose to run all cells in your notebook at once using the run all button on the top of the screen. Another strength of notebooks is that you'll be able to see how long each of your code blocks takes to run. For interactions between the notebook and Envy, you can choose to start Envy headlessly, as we do here, or with the user interface, which would then allow you to send over any outputs from this notebook to the data manager in Envy directly. Notebooks allow you to display rasters by themselves or over a map overlay, as I show here. This is a true color image during the fire, and we can see it covers Tenerife in the Canary Islands. This type of display allows you to zoom in and out and orient yourself geographically, which is a feature that is not readily built into the NV user interface. By default, notebooks will display rasters using true color combinations if wavelength data are available. Ideal notebooks also support animating through bands. If we wanted to animate through all 10 bands in my Sentinel-2 stack, I can start typing NV notebook, and the autocomplete function will help me out by bringing up the animate bands option. I can then use the hover help function to figure out the appropriate inputs for this command. In this case, I just have to give it the name of my raster, cofire. Again, autocomplete saves me from having to type the whole thing out. If we run this cell, it'll bring up the animation. I can start and pause it and toggle back and forth between the bands. You can see that the smoke plumes stand out in the first few bands, but not in the last two. I know that these last two are the shortwave infrared bands, but we can pull up the metadata to double check. We can use IDL commands to display the full metadata for our raster, as you can see here. This includes band names, gain and offset values, data ignore values, wavelength and wavelength units, among others. We can also just plot the relevant metadata subset showing which of the bands correspond to which wavelength in this stack by printing out band names and wavelengths. The band numbers in parentheses are the actual Sentinel-2 bands in this 10-band stack. We can see that the last two are bands 11 and 12 with wavelengths around 1600 and 2200 nanometers, which corresponds to the short wave infrared. We can now use this information to plot a false color composite with the relevant bands to bring up the fire in red. We can also choose to plot only a subset of the image instead of the full raster by providing the minimum and maximum X and Y pixel location. To map the changes before and after the fire, I am importing a Sentinel-2 image from before and another from after the fire. In this section, I am importing the two images separately. However, if you were performing time series or bulk pre-processing, 
you can instead leverage IDL for loops to automatically read in all rasters in your target directory and further automate your processing. This other animation shows both imported images already showing visible changes between before and after the fire. IDL notebooks also support plotting vector data. For instance, we can choose to plot the outlines of the original image in red and the cropped image in blue. Region of interest data can also be imported and displayed. This is useful since I will be using regions of interests as the labels in my machine learning model. Here, I have a map display of the post-fire image and I have plotted the burned area region of interests in yellow and the background area region of interests in blue. These are the labels we will use to train the random forest machine learning classification in this workflow. At this stage in the notebook, with all of our data imported, we can start calling Envy tasks to process the data. You can find a list of tasks in the online documentation for the Envy API. You can also take advantage of autocomplete to access all possible tasks, and then you can hover over your selection to bring up its help page, including a section with examples that you can copy and paste to assist with coding. We can call on Envy tasks to extract the training data and train the random forest model. And once we've run the model, we can print the statistics out to the screen to assess its performance, including its precision, recall, and F1 score, as well as the confusion matrix. With our model ready to go, we can proceed with classifying our data. With each task, we can specify if we want the file to be temporary or saved to our files. I want to save the output so I can come back to it later, but I also want to visualize it right away within the notebook. So here is the result with burned areas in yellow, background in blue, and unclassified in black. We can call in other Envy Pulse processing tools to clean up our result, like smoothing and aggregation. And we can also mask the values for unclassified and background areas, so we only have our burned area of interest that we can use as a map overlay. This animation shows our overlay before and after these cleaning steps. To aid with visualization, we can plot this new burn scar raster over the post-fire true color raster in our map so we can see the full extent of the fire, as shown here in yellow. Finally, we can convert our classification output to a region of interest and pull additional statistics from it, for instance, the number of burned pixels, which allows us to calculate the total burn area in hectares. Once you are done with a notebook and ready to share it, you can share it directly as a notebook with or without your embedded outputs and visualizations, or you can choose to convert the notebook to PDF or to Pro Code using these icons on the top right hand side. This concludes this longer version of the IDL notebook video. You can find additional information through the IDL for VS Code extension docs clicking this link here. If you're interested in learning more, please check out our website, download the extension, and play with the example notebooks.